What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Ranger Central. Today, we are going to be talking about how LaViolette was robbed of a Jack Adams finalist spot. And we're going to be talking about just additional things with the Rangers Kane series that maybe I didn't touch on in the first video because we got a lot to get into. And I'm ready for puck drop. It just got announced yesterday, I believe it was, that Sunday night, Sunday night's looking like puck drop. Lazzy said it's going to be a night game. So I trust him with that. And then. We've heard all around. It's confirmed. It's on the NHL app at this point that Sunday is the game. It's just a matter of night or afternoon. I think it's going to be a night game, which I selfishly don't like because of the fact that I want to do the post game when I get home from the game. But it's going to be a pain because it's going to be late at night. But I digress. That, that's a me problem, not a you guys problem. Although it is a you guys problem if you do enjoy the post games, which if you do, I don't know how you do enjoy this stupid mouth talking but i'm gonna stop talking about that and i'm gonna say leave a like on the video if you do enjoy subscribe if you guys are new especially if you're ranger fans shout out to the members that are watching this in advance i'm starting to release stuff for members first because i want to get the members more involved here i want to start utilizing my membership program here more so if you do want to join you could start at 4.99 a month there's different subscription tiers you could go ahead and click the join button down below next to the subscribe button i believe it is if you feel like it don't feel obligated to but if you want extra content if you want to get early access to videos all that other stuff i'm gonna start doing a lot more membership stuff just to actually you know have an incentive to be a member so if you are interested in any of that you could click the button there, but now let's get into everything that I need to talk about with this series and just with Laviolette being robbed of the Jack Adams. So your finalists are, I believe it was Rick Tockett, Rick Bonus, and Andrew Brunette. So that I question why, one of them I question specifically, why Rick Bonus? And my reason I question that is, Everyone's like, well, the Rangers were a predictable playoff team. I felt the Winnipeg Jets were a predictable playoff team, first of all. Second, no disrespect to Rick Bonus, and I do feel like I feel bad that he did have to miss time for what he did because it is horrible and nobody should have to go through some of the things that he had to go through between I think it was like passing in families and his wife being diagnosed with cancer and whatever else it might have been. And I do feel bad. Nobody deserves to go through that. Nobody. But Quite frankly, he did miss time, and I don't understand how that gives him, how that puts him in a spot to get Jack Adams votes when he wasn't around the team the entire season. And again, I feel for him, and I'm sorry that he had to go through that, but at the same time, if we're going based strictly on who had an impact behind the bench, why is it that Rick Bonus gets... The nod there and not only that even if you do want to give a shout here to rick bonus in terms of you know having an impact on the team all that other stuff well why is it that he gets jack adams votes for bringing a team that was in the playoffs last year let's see the point dif uh, difference too was in the playoffs last year with 95 points to bring them to the playoffs this year with 110 pretty big difference I, I won't deny that but at the same time the rangers 107 last year the 114 again definitely a smaller gap but this is the best regular season the rangers have had in franchise history and i don't understand how there's no nod to peter laviolette with what he does to the game and what he does for this Rangers team in terms of a difference. Like there's a visible difference on the ice. And this is where I hate how the voting is and how I feel it's just skewed at times where watch the damn games, like wa watch games and you'll actually get an idea of who deserves the nine stuff. And I'm not going to sit here and be completely biased because there are different coaches that I do believe deserves some credit like i think paul maurice is a really good mind in florida i do think obviously brenda moore is good i think john cooper needs to get a jack adams at some point in his coaching career i don't know when it's going to be but even him like i could have understood john cooper you battle without andre vasilevsky most of the season half the season and make the playoffs like that i feel deserves maybe a nod there and i think part of where the lot where we're lost in terms of who deserves the Jack Adams 
is in general with the fact that, oh, well, this team wasn't expected to make the playoffs and they did make the playoffs, where I feel it should actually be what team had a quality coach versus what team or what team maybe previously didn't have a good coach and does now or, you know, who coached their team to be at a different level. Like, I, I don't know how to explain what I mean by that, but... You know, you look at even then, 2021-22, Bruce Cassidy, I don't think he was a Jack Adams finalist. And then the next year, you have Jim Montgomery, who was a finalist. And I know they broke the regular season record in terms of points, wins, all that. But why does regular all the regular season success matter then? And why does it not, or why doesn't it matter when a team missed the playoffs then, made the playoff? I got lost there. When a team made the playoffs the year prior and then made it again the year after, but they had the franchise record, so then they deserved the nod. All right, well, the Rangers had their franchise record. They had the best regular season in their history, and no nod to that. I don't know. I, I just think it's complete and utterly ridiculous that there's no nod there, especially with the injuries, too, that the Rangers did go through, missing Adam Fox at times. Igor Shostorkin being off his game, missing him at times. What am I missing here? Philip Heedle not being here throughout most of the season. What am I what am I missing here? Like, am I crazy? Am I biased? Am I delusional for thinking that Laviolette deserves to be in this conversation? Over Rick Bonus at the very least. I don't know. I, I just don't see the argument there. I just don't. Like, if you were going to give it to, give the nod to one coach who coached a team that was in the playoffs a year prior and made the playoffs again, it had to be Laviolette. I'm sorry, it just did. And again, maybe you could give the argument of Paul Maurice where, you know, they had the 92-point season last year and then they jump up to 110 first in the division and they've been unbelievable ever since he's taken over as the head coach. But that's just me. That's just my opinion on that. But we will move on from ranting about that to talking about the greatness of Laviolette because it kind of does segue into the conversation here as to why I also think he deserves the nod because at practice yesterday, he had the New York Rangers doing something that Gerard Gallant would actually never. Like, he in a billion years would never even think of this. So Laviolette apparently at practice yesterday had the Rangers practicing Carolina's man-on-man -man defense or going against the man-on-man -man defense. And obviously that practice doesn't translate to games and Carolina has that system down to perfection where the Rangers just simply don't. Like, that's just not how their game is. But I will say that I love the idea of that approach. Like, it is brilliant to have that approach. And Gerard Gallant would never think of that in a billion years. He wouldn't have thought of at the beginning of the Washington series to have Louis Domingue here to practice on a goalie that catches with his right hand to practice for Charlie Lindgren. There are just things that he is doing that Gallant wouldn't have thought of in a billion years. Instead, Gallant would be switching the lines after, well, they wouldn't have swept Washington if he was here. For all we know, the season's done right now with him here. We're going into a game seven talking about that, but... That's neither here nor there. I don't even want to talk about that clown for the rest of the show here. But I love the idea of having them practice. And apparently he was getting pissed at practice too yesterday about the way that the Rangers were going about it. Maybe there was something he didn't like or and he's worried about something there, which not going to lie, does worry me a bit considering the fact that, you know, when he notices something, it does speak volumes because he sees the game like... None, like none other in this game. So it is a little concerning, but I'm not entirely concerned because of the fact that they have it till Sunday to get things down pat. And I do believe in them to get it down pat, especially with a guy like him behind the bench that knows how to write things, write the ship here and has pushed the right buttons all season long. So I'm not entirely worried, but it does. It, it's definitely a little infuriating. To know that uh you know he's not happy at practice which means something's a little off there but again we'll see what happens and i truly believe they'll be ready to go game one 
or a puck drop either way. And then leading into the practice conversation, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with Adam Fox. He hasn't been practicing the past few days, just maintenance reasons. And we know that he did take that knee on knee hit there in game four against Washington from Jensen, I believe it was. So I don't know if there's much to it. I just haven't really talked about it because I didn't really think much of it. But now that he's missed a couple practices in a row, it is a little, it's a little worrisome to me. But again, I'm not fully hitting the panic button on that one yet. I do think he's going to play game one either way, even if it is, you know, even if it's bothering him. I think he's going to play game one either way. So I'm not too worried, but it is a little interesting that he has not been practicing really as of lately. And then the other thing that I want to talk about, Phil Pietl, it's looking like there's not much to add with him, to be honest with you. It he's just been rotating in with the first line, the third line every now and then at 5v5. And it it's not like he's getting the full on rep. So that does tell me that maybe he's not going to be available game one. There's still a gap from now to game one here, but I don't know if he's going to be available at this rate, considering the fact that I feel he would have been taking regular reps with the team and it's just been the same line combination so Matt Rempe looking like in the lineup and I know there's the debate within the fan base of should Rempe be in should he be out to me whatever wins you games whatever wins you games and I get the argument from both sides I get the argument because I am a big Matt Rempe guys and I do agree with the point where it's contagious his physicality and this team's not going to take liberties with him in the lineup and is going to have that physical edge with him and they're going to feel safe around him in the lineup and he does add an impact to the game it's just the other argument that i see is that well he only plays five six minutes and it's tough to justify having a guy that sits pretty much the entire third period be in your lineup and you're running with 11 forwards all the time I get the argument to both sides, but again, whatever's going to win this team games is what I want and is what Laviolette's going to do at the end of the day. If they lose game one, I think we're going to see a scenario where Rempe's pulled right out of the lineup and they're going to go out there and put Johnny Brodzinski in or Phil Peedle if he is available um, game two. But again, that's all to be determined. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be the case, but yeah, I don't know. We will... We'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens with the lineup combos. I think they're practicing again today, or it might be tomorrow that they're practicing again. So get it practicing tomorrow before the before the game day. But in terms of content that will be here, we're gonna do pre-game shows as much as possible uh, during the series as well. We're gonna be doing a lot of different things here because you know how we are come playoff time and then the post games i'll do my best to get those live and going as soon as i could after attending some of these games so but again no promises on that one being too early but i appreciate everyone that does tune in and watch on replay or even watches live sticking it with me at midnight throughout these post game shows throughout all this I really do appreciate all of you guys. You guys have no idea. And thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. That's where I'm going to end things. Laviolette was robbed. Rangers came Sunday. Get me to Sunday. I'm ready for puck drop. I'm excited for puck drop. Bring me there. But thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Ranger fans. Turn on your notifications so you know I upload or go live on the channel next. I'll see you guys in the next one.